Our exhortation this morning comes from Galatians 5 and 6, uh, but we'll start with Romans uh, chapter 15, verse 13, which says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This is a benediction, and it has a purpose. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. God gives his people joy and hope and peace, excuse me, joy and peace, so that we can be filled with the Spirit and abound in hope. Christians are not called to just ride it out in this life. We're not supposed to merely eke our way through life on earth. We're to be filled with the Spirit, overflowing with joy and peace and hope. Christian homes, as well, should be marked by joy and peace and hope. But unfortunately, many of our homes um, are filled with the opposite. Far too often our homes are full of anger and bickering uh, with the side of anxiety. Of course, uh, with this election season approaching, mainstream media is cashing in on the, this big business of fear porn. And when we Americans need a little hit during the weekday, we can always check in on social media to see what fresh panic or despair the algorithm has to serve up to us. When parents are hooked up to this media drip, should it be a surprise to us that our homes aren't filled with joy and peace and hope? We, more than ever, more than ever, we need the God of hope to fill our homes with joy and peace in believing by the power of the Holy Spirit so that our homes may overflow with hope during these what seem to be hopeless times. So what does abounding in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit look like? Well, first, I want to notice about this, this benediction in Romans um, that joy and peace aren't things. They're not things that the scripture uh, is telling us to manufacture ourselves. Joy and peace are a gift of God and a fruit of believing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. It's important not to mix this up. There's this grave danger um, in pursuing joy or peace for their own sake. If you only want a joyful home so that uh, you can take good Instagram photos or have a happy looking family on Christmas cards, if it's just that you want the benefit of joy but you want it detached from its source, then beware, you might, you're going to get what you wish for. You're making your home a whitewashed tomb full of empty bones. This is the sin of the Pharisees who pursued external holiness but whose hearts were far from God. If this is our brand of Christianity, then Jesus' condemnation of the Pharisees will absolutely apply to us and to our children. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel across sea and land to make a single proselyte, and when, you have, when he becomes a proselyte, you make him twice as much a child of hell as yourselves. If the goal in your home is to wash up good on Sundays, to show off your storybook family, but your hearts are far from God, then you are a hypocrite, and your children will turn out twice the child of hell that you are. The peace and joy that scripture uh, speaks of here is not something that we can manufacture again. It is, however, something that we can absolutely expect in our homes if we turn from the works of the flesh and walk in the spirit. So Galatians 5 is the chapter, if you'll remember, it's the, it's the chapter with the famous uh, fruit of the Spirit list, love, joy, peace, etc. And it's contrasted with the works of the flesh, sexual morality, idolatry, fits of anger, etc. And Paul tells us in the chapter how to recognize, recognize when we're walking in the Spirit. In verse 25, he says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Are you a conceited know-it-all? Do you pick fights with others in your home? Is your home filled with envious bickering and petty nitpicking? If so, Paul says you're out of step with the Spirit. In verses 13 through 17 of, of, of Galatians 5, he says, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, 
and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other. So the desires of the flesh and the desires of the spirit are like oil and water. They don't mix. If your home is marked by biting and devouring one another, then you're not living in the spirit. The good news is that you don't have to do this yourself. In fact, you can't do this by yourself. The flesh cannot produce the fruit of the spirit. So stop trying to do this by your own effort and stop trying to parent in the flesh. In Galatians 6, Paul says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore, restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Each time I read this verse, I think about uh, the, the, the flight attendant who says, you know, in case of emergency, the, the mask will drop. And, and before you put it on yourself, put it on your child. Uh, excuse me, put it on yourself before you put it on a child. Your attempt to sort someone else, and, and, and this is true spiritually. Uh, this is what, this, is what this, this verse is saying. Your attempt to sort someone else out is going to result in disaster if you yourself are not first spiritual or filled with the Spirit much like Jesus' instruction about removing the plank in your own eye first. The instruction is, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. So when you're walking in the spirit, your approach to addressing sin is sanctified. There's gentleness and there's restoration. Notice that it doesn't say you who are spiritual should crush them with a devastatingly smart argument. Or you who are spiritual should guilt them endlessly so that they never make that mistake again. Satan's approach to sin is accusation, biting and devouring. Whenever we merely want to accuse others of sin, we are being satanic. The spirit approaches sin with gentleness in order to restore the person. So when Paul says, you who are spiritual, he is talking about being filled with the spirit and exhibiting the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So parents, you cannot restore your children in gentleness or live peacefully with your spouse or establish a home filled with joy and peace if you are walking by the flesh and out of step with the spirit. So the exhortation in summary, the exhortation is forsake the works of the flesh, keep in step with the spirit, restore one another in gentleness so that our homes may be filled with peace and joy, abounding in hope and empowered by the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may abound in hope. This reminds us of our need to confess our sin. So as we're uh, doing, as we're preparing ourselves to do that, let's sing hymn 354.